What's up y'all, this is part two of a two-part series that I'm doing. In the previous video, we looked at four signs that you might be living in the flesh. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can tell whether you are walking in the spirit. Now, just as we did in the previous video, I want you to grab a pencil and a piece of paper, and I want you to grade yourself on a scale of one to five in these following four areas. One, meaning you're struggling with it, and then five, meaning you are mastering it. And just as I did in the previous video, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you where I rate myself. I encourage you to do the same and put your grade in the comments as well, but more importantly, I'm gonna share with you why walking in the spirit is so critical for the believer. And so the first way that we can tell whether we are walking in the spirit or not is what I'm gonna call yielding to the spirit's promptings. Now, Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. He said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. Now, this can be done in a couple of ways. The first way is that the Holy Spirit brings back to your remembrance a scripture that maybe you previously downloaded into your spirit. So the Holy Spirit is now uploading what you previously downloaded to your mind to prompt you, to encourage you, to motivate you to do something that God wants you to do. Now, this might be you need to forgive somebody or it might be that you need to apologize, or it might be that you're experiencing conviction because the Spirit of God is, is pulling something up in your spirit that you know you shouldn't be doing, but he's reminding you that you shouldn't be doing it. Or you could be in a conversation with somebody. You might be very tempted to say something to that person, but the Spirit of God brings a scripture up to your mind to remind you not to say what you very well may want to say to that particular person. So that's one way that we can be yielding to the Spirit's promptings. But there's another way. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt us to do something that may not necessarily be some Bible verse, but it's just a prompting that you feel and sense in your spirit that the Holy Spirit is wanting you to do. Now, let me give you a couple of examples of this in scripture. In Acts chapter eight, verse 29, it says, the Spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. Now, there wasn't a Bible verse that the Spirit brought up. The Spirit led him, the Spirit prompted him to do this very thing. Now, Peter also says something similar in chapter 11. It says here, the Spirit told me to accompany them with no doubts at all. These six brothers also accompanied me and we went into the man's house. So once again, it was the Holy Spirit who was prompting Peter to go with these men and he yielded to what the Spirit was leading him to do. And then later on in chapter 16, verse six and seven, it says this, they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. They had been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they came to Mycenae, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So do you see? Sometimes, my friend, the Holy Spirit is going to maybe prohibit you from doing something, or maybe other times he's gonna lead you to do something. And the more intimate you have a connection with God, the more you will be able to discern how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, leading you, guiding you along the way. Once again, sometimes it might be a Bible verse, other times it might just be an internal prompting where the Spirit is guiding you along the way to ensure that you are doing something that God wants you to do or not doing something that God doesn't want you to do. Now, the second way that we can tell whether we're walking in the Spirit is if we're displaying the fruit of the Spirit. Now, Paul outlines these in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And what I want you to do is I want you to rate yourself in these following areas because the more your life exhibits this type of behavior, the fruit of the Spirit, the less it will exhibit the works or the deeds of the flesh that we talked about in the previous video. Now, love. Love is the Greek word agape here, and this is just the selfless type of unconditional love that God has for us. So how are you doing in that area as it relates to your interpersonal relationships? Joy, is your life generally characterized by joy? I'm not talking about happiness where it depends on certain things that are happening around you. I'm talking about 
in the midst of everything that's going on, the craziness, in, internally in your spirit, you have a sense of joy and contentment because you know that God is ultimately in control. What about peace? Would you say that your life is generally characterized by peace or do you have all sorts of strife and all sorts of jealousy and all sorts of fussing and quarreling and dissensions and divisions and all that stuff going on in your life. What about patience? Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, spoiler alert, Brother Parr struggles with patience. Can I get an amen, right? So the idea here is, are you long suffering? Are you patient? Are you merciful towards the people in your life who very well may not be moving as fast as you want them to be? Or maybe they're not changing as fast as you may want them to change, right? Or maybe you're just at a stoplight and you're just impatient, or maybe you're in a grocery line and you're just impatient. Like, how are you doing in this area of patience? Then you have kindness and goodness, and these two kind of go along lines with each other. Kindness, do you do random acts of kindness for people? Do you just go out of your way and just actually do nice things for people? Even when they do not ask you to do them, you just do them out of the kindness of your heart. Faithfulness. Are you faithful over the things that God has currently given you to steward at this point in your life? Gentleness. How are you as it relates to how you deal with people? Your words, your tone, your demeanor, your attitude, all of those things, verbally and non-verbally. Are you gentle generally in terms of how you relate to people or would people call you more abrasive or rude? And then you have self-control. Are you consistently going through your life denying your flesh of the things that it really wants, whether it's food, whether it is sex, whether it is attention, whether it's lust, whatever it is, are you consistently exhibiting a pattern of self-control in your life. So before we move on to category number three, I want to encourage you to take a moment and rate yourself. How are you doing in these areas of the fruit of the spirit? Now, the third way that I would say that you are walking in the spirit is if you are experiencing the power of the spirit or rather you are empowered by the spirit. Now, what I mean here is, there are some specific things that you in and of your own strength are not able to do. But on a consistent basis, do you sense that the Holy Spirit is enabling you to do some things that you know in and of yourself with your own strength and your own power, you are just not able to do. Now that very well might be serving in your area of giftedness, using your gifts. It might be uh, that you are resisting temptation. It might be that you are trying to share your faith with somebody. It might be that you are trying to defend your faith to somebody who is challenging you. It might be that you are trying to disciple somebody and you don't feel adequate in this area, but you sense while you are doing it that the Holy Spirit is enabling you, is empowering you to do something that you know that you are not able to pull off by yourself. If this is something that you're experiencing on a regular basis, this in my mind is a clear sign that you are walking in the spirit. So take a moment and grade yourself to see whether you are mostly doing things in your own strength or do you more consistently sense that God is empowering you to do something. And then the fourth and final way that I believe we can see whether we are walking in the spirit is what I'm gonna call worship and praying in the spirit. Now, I want you to notice here what Paul said in Ephesians chapter five about being filled with the spirit. He says here, and don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled or be controlled by the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul says here, wow, what a beautiful picture of what it looks like to walk in the spirit. So whenever you and I are worshiping God and we're singing worship to God and we're lifting our hands to God and we are thankful to God for the things that he's done in our lives, 
This is a sign that we are walking in the Spirit of God. So to aid you in this, I encourage you to get a list of your favorite worship songs and just play those over and over again throughout the day so that you can stay in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense where you're walking in the Spirit and you're in tune with God. And the lyrics of these songs are not only theologically correct, but they are reminding you of who God is and who God, uh, His presence in your life. This is one key way that we can walk in the Spirit, but not only worshiping in the Spirit, but praying in the Spirit as well. Notice what Jude says in chapter one, there's only one chapter, Jude, verse 20. It says here, but you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You know that you are walking in the Spirit when your prayers are being led and being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, I do not equate this verse with praying in tongues as some do. And the reason for that is because God will never require or command you to do something that is a gift. If tongues is a gift that some believers have, then how can he command you to do something if not every believer is going to do it? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I believe that the Holy Spirit can empower you to be able to pray in your native language, whatever that is, so that your prayers are led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit can show you supernaturally, specifically, how to intercede and pray for someone else without you having to actually speak in tongues. I believe that it all depends on how intimate you are with God. The more intimate your fellowship is with God, the more your prayers will be Spirit-led. Now, before I share with you my personal score, I just wanna talk about why this is so critical for the believer, and Paul gives us the answer in verse 16. He says, I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. There you have it, folks. That is the promise that God has given to us. The more you and I exhibit this type of character where we're walking in the spirit, we're in tune with the spirit, we're yielding to the spirit, we're worshiping in the spirit, we're praying in the spirit, we're exhibiting the fruit of the spirit, all of these different ways, we're being empowered by the spirit. The more our lives are characterized by these things, the less our lives will be characterized by the deeds of the flesh. Now, how did I do in these four areas? Let me give you my score. Okay, category number one, promptings. I gave myself a four. I believe for the most part, I do pretty well when the spirit tells me to, for, uh, to apologize to my wife or I really wanna say something, but then I'm like, no, I probably shouldn't say that. That's not wise. Or uh, maybe he leads me to do something, like something nice for someone or whatever. Or I'm regularly remembering Bible verses that I have planted in my spirit that comes up in my mind and I'm uh, yielding to those. I'm not perfect, but I would give myself a four in that area. As far as the fruit of the spirit concerns, I would give myself a three, maybe even a two, because I think there's some areas in my life I struggle with significantly. Loving people selflessly is something I struggle with. Generally, I have joy. Generally, I have peace. Patience, you can forget it. I struggle with patience. I struggle sometimes with self-control. I struggle in a significant way of doing random acts of kindness for people. So I'd probably give myself either a two or if I'm being generous, I'd probably give myself a three. As far as being empowered by the Spirit, I gave myself a four here because I believe that I am not able to do what I'm doing right now unless I'm being empowered by the Spirit. I do on a regular basis sense that when I'm ministering to you all on these videos, or maybe if I'm speaking to, to a group of people, that I feel that I'm being empowered by the Spirit of God. In other words, it's a Spirit who is enabling me to do this, and I'm not able to do it within my own strength. And then worshiping in the Spirit. And praying, is, I give myself once again a three here. Worship, I do very well. Prayer, I struggle with if I'm just being honest, right? And so I gave myself a three there. So if you add those up, 
Uh, that gives me a 14 out of 20, which is a 70%. Once again, in the same way as the past video, I got some work to do. I would love to know your score. How did you rate yourself in these four areas as it relates to walking in the spirit? And tell us specifically what area you might be struggling with the most so we can hold you accountable. And remember, if you missed the first video, I put a link in the description, go back and watch that so you can see and grade yourself on how you're doing as it relates to living in the flesh. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to keep this series going as it relates to the flesh and the spirit, let me know and I can easily add to it and do some more videos on this topic. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.